Maybe it's me. I'm sick of 2K. I've been playing it for years, and it seems like every year the game gets more money hungry, and this year specifically nothing substantial was even added, making this probably the least exciting 2K of my lifetime. You may be wondering why this review is so late. The crazy part is that the NBA season hasn't even started yet. I really don't know why 2K releases in September. The NFL season just started, and I feel like most people aren't even thinking about the NBA until October. I bought NBA 2K24 for $70. I did not want to buy it, since none of my friends have the game, and because I heard that 2K24 was more heavily monetized than ever before. But I feel like my reviews help enlighten enough people who would have bought the game otherwise to make up for that $70. But it stings feeling like I financially supported 2K24. At least I could use Xbox Game Pass to get a 10 hour trial of Madden for that review. I'm someone who is usually higher on 2K games than most, and I gave 2K23 a 6.5 out of 10 last year, mostly for the advancement in the game's franchise mode, My NBA. The My Eras feature allowed you to jump into a specific point in NBA history, such as the early 1980s, and your team's logos, uniforms, arena, and roster were all authentic to that era. No other sports game had done anything like that before, so I was impressed. That said, I can't help but feel like 2K has started to stagnate after playing the last few titles heavily. The differences between 2K21 on PS5 and 2K23 on PS5 aren't very large. And even last year I criticized the game heavily and docked it multiple points for the insane amount of microtransactions. We are currently in an era of sports gaming where every single game sucks. EA Sports FC 24 looks to be just your average modern FIFA title. MLB The Show has gotten stale. Madden is a complete joke. The NHL games are underwhelming. For a while, to me, NBA 2K was the best of the bunch, with the best mix of solid gameplay, presentation, and deep game modes. And I think I overrated the series because it looked better than it really was when compared directly to these other worse sports games. I think 2K is aware of this, because they barely touch 2K24. They know the game will sell regardless and they know that by adding more microtransactions and nothing else, they will still make bank and still have one of the better sports games on the market, for whatever that's worth. NBA 2K24 sat unopened on my PS5's home screen for weeks. I couldn't get myself to play it, not even for the YouTube money. I just really didn't want to. But I need to get this review out before the NBA season starts, so I finally bit the bullet. Isn't that sad though? When I was a kid, I'd be so excited to play the new 2K. Maybe it's just because I'm older now, sure, but I recently just had a really fun time playing Starfield as an adult. So I don't think it's me, I think sports games just genuinely suck ass right now, and being aware of that kills my excitement. NBA 2K24 is not worth your money or anyone's money. Which I know is ironic because I bought the game, but how else am I to review it? This game is barely any different from NBA 2K23, with the exception of a new Battle Pass system that has no place in a paid video game and Mamba moments. The rest of this game is not untouched, but it feels close. Gameplay is tweaked and better, but its overall feel is getting outdated. This game doesn't feel new or fresh, it feels like the same old 2K I've been playing for years, although now it's trying to bully even more money out of its player base. No non-sports game could get away with what 2K does. Fortnite has a battle pass because the game is free to play, and that battle pass is cosmetic items only. So how is it okay for 2K to add a paid battle pass to a $70 game that gives players a competitive advantage online? This game no longer exists to provide us with an NBA simulation, it exists to capitalize on its past and lack of competition by using the free mobile game monetization method to make as much money as possible with as little effort as possible. In order to make myself feel better about wasting $70 on this game, I partnered up with Manscaped.com who thankfully sponsored this video. With the NBA season about to start, don't neglect your balls. Their new Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need for the upcoming season. The Lawnmower 4.0 is the latest version of the legendary electric waterproof trimmer, featuring skin safe technology and an LED spotlight. The Crop Preserver is a deodorant for your balls that also moisturizes them too. 
Trust me, you need this after hooping. The Crop Reviver is a refreshing solution to swamp crotch, and the Weed Whacker 2.0 cuts through ear and nose hairs like Giannis cuts to the rim. You also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Reduced Chafing Manscaped Boxers. Get ready for tip-off by going to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use code SOFTDRINK. Again, that's free international shipping and 20% off using code SOFTDRINK at manscaped.com. Now back to the video. My career no longer feels like an NBA career mode. It just feels like a tedious way to push players into spending money. You start out as a 60 overall, so when you play online in the park after spending at least $70 on the game, you will be garbage at everything. To improve your player, or to even put on different clothes so other players will actually want to squat up with you, you need to spend VC. To get VC, you can either play the game or spend real money. You would need to spend $50 for enough VC to make your player a 75 overall. If you want to earn the VC in-game, you can play your NBA career with your My Player, but as a 60 overall, he will be one of the worst players in the league. And you barely get any VC on a per-game basis. New to 2K24 is badge regression, so if you aren't staying on top of a specific badge, it will regress to a worse version. This mode feels like it only exists to push and bully you into spending more money. $70 wasn't enough, now you need to drop 50 on VC just to be a 75 overall. But if you want cool animations and clothing and you want to be at least an 80 overall, that's another $50 of VC or hundreds of hours grinding my career games or another mode. So either waste your time playing nothing but NBA 2K24, or pay at least $170 just to be competitive online in NBA 2K24. I no longer see the point of my career. Back in the 2016 days, it was a decent but cheesy story mode that tied into your career, and it was just fun. Since then, nothing has really changed all that much. It still has a cheesy story, although it's arguably worse than ever. You still do the exact same stuff. It needs some serious innovation as well as less microtransactions to be enjoyable in this modern era. Sure, compared to Madden's Superstar mode or Road to the Show, it's definitely better, but that no longer means anything. The park itself is an open world beach city, but it's pretty lifeless without anything all that new to do, but it looks cool at least. After creating a player, you go straight there and have quests for your NBA career, such as going to your facility to practice, or go talk to Jake from State Farm for some more forced advertising in a game that is already sucking your wallet dry. Mamba Moments is the best addition to this game. Like the Jordan Moments last year, this mode gives you a chance to relive history as Kobe Bryant throughout his career. It's a fun mode and something I wish other sports games would include. Despite all of their faults, at least 2K respects the history of the sport they represent. My team is where things get ugly. For a price of $10 or $20, you can buy an enhanced season pass. The $10 Pro Pass gets you 40 extra premium rewards that are not available to those who spend $70 on the game. The Hall of Fame $20 Pass gives you a 15% XP boost and 10 level skips as well. Basically, this is a paid battle pass system like you'd see in Fortnite, holding certain cards and upgrades behind a paywall. This makes no sense in a fully priced $70 video game that, as we mentioned earlier, you need to spend $170 on just to be competitive in my career. So if you want to be competitive in my team too, you don't have to spend money, but the game does encourage it. Let's say you want a solid competitive team without grinding. So spend another $50 on VC and get 20 packs that might net you 3 or 4 good cards that will be useless in a month. Then spend 20 more dollars for the battle pass thing. Now we're looking at $240 for this game. A game that no one will be playing 11 months from now. It's insane. The gameplay is improved this year, don't get me wrong. This game isn't garbage, this game isn't the worst. It's just not good, because it is heavily weighed down by its monetization. But the gameplay itself is better than last year. That said, it's still NBA 2K. You need to green to make shots, it's very animation-based. Single-player gameplay is wildly different from competitive online gameplay. Shots will randomly miss when you think they should go in, but that luck never swings the other way, and you'll never randomly make a shot you shouldn't. 
It plays well, don't get me wrong, this is a fine 2k on the court, but it's not pushing the envelope or really improving all that much. It's not giving me any real reason to upgrade from 2k23. The game hasn't looked or felt that different since 2k21 dropped on next gen. Presentation is basically identical to last year, besides some broadcast package tweaks. My NBA The Franchise Mode added a new light option for those who want a less complicated, more simple franchise mode, and there's also a new era in the 2010s. I wish they instead added a Bill Russell era with a black and white broadcast filter like they sort of did in 2K12 instead of the LeBron era though. Also, some players will actually age in my NBA. For example, Kobe will lose his hair over time, which adds immersion. If you're just going to be playing my NBA offline, this is a fine NBA game, but I just don't see why you should buy it over 2K23, which is almost the exact same thing offline and it's cheaper, and if you claimed it, it was free on PlayStation Plus the other month. If you play 2K Online, this one is as predatory as it's ever been. And while gameplay will feel improved, it won't feel improved enough to warrant spending all that money or grinding long enough to become competitive. This game only exists to suck money out of your bank account, and in this economy, it's probably best to avoid it altogether this year. NBA 2K24 is not good, and my final score is a 4 out of 10. There is fun to be had here, but why even bother? I think sports games need to release once every few years with roster, uniform, and arena DLC each year in between releases. That way, each release would feel fresh and developers would have enough time to innovate and push the genre forward. With modern hardware, it's unreasonable to expect developers to drastically change or improve a sports game within a one-year cycle, so these games are all setting themselves up for critical failure. The issue here is that these games are always a commercial success, so what's the incentive for companies like 2K or EA to start releasing games every few years instead with $20 roster updates each year? It's less money overall, but it would be better for us consumers. But if we keep buying these yearly releases every single year, these companies will keep making them, and things will continue to get worse. The future of sports gaming is bleak. Our best hope, in my opinion, is competition returning, whether that's NBA Live, NBA Street, or something else. Thanks for watching.